welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look into creating an interactable uh, loot chest that we'll then use in our next video to uh, to have some loot that we can add to our inventory. Uh, but first we're going to take a look at how we can make an interactable loot chest. Uh, so the chest that we're going to use actually comes from the Learn tab here. And you want to download this content examples. Uh, if you already have it and it's for version 4.22, you should be good. If it's for a previous version, it may not migrate nicely. You'll have to try. I made sure that my content examples was up to date and matched the version I needed. So I'm now opening that up. <clears throat> here it is. You should have this anyway. There's lots of good stuff in here. We're going to scroll down to example content and then uh, network features, meshes, and we're going to grab these two and we're going to do asset actions migrate. It's going to move all this stuff with it, with it, which is good. We're going to go to our let's make an MMO, open world starter plugin, and point it to the content folder. Right? So wherever you've got your your project, find the content folder, and we're going to say select folder. Okay, it's going to migrate the content, and then we're going to go open it up. And uh, one of the things we're going to be using uh, is we're going to be using an interface. And we'll talk a little bit about what interfaces are and how they can be used, um, but they, for this specific thing, they work out quite nicely. <clears throat> so let's create a new folder here under third person BP called interactables. And then we'll create a new folder under that called loot. Okay. And then um, we will create an actor called Loot Chest. And inside that, let's add a static mesh. And I'll call it, um, let's see, Chest Bottom. And we'll add another one here as a sub mesh to it called Chest called upper chest lid. Okay, so we're going to go here, type in chest, there's chest bottom, yay, and we'll add chest lid. Okay, and we're going to drag this up until it snaps. We'll drag it over, and you can see you can't get it exactly, right? So it's between negative 30 and negative 40. So we're going to go here and do negative 35. And now it lines up. Okay. Uh, we need to add a variable called is open. And we need to make this variable a rep notify, which will create an on rep is open function for us. And we're going to say, okay, use this is open. Do a select. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take this chest lid. We're going to do set relative rotation. If we drag this here, we'll get two different rotators. So what we want to do is we want to say, hey, if it's open, then we're going to give it a 45 degree tilt to open the lid. Luckily, the chest lid in this viewport, see, it's the green one here, so that's the Y. Luckily, it can just rotate around that, so that'll tip it up, which is nice and easy. I set the uh, axis in the right place, and of course, if it's not open, then it's 0, 0, 0, and it goes back to closed. So what's going to happen here is that um, we're going to change the value on the server of is open, and it's going to replicate back to everybody in relevancy. 
and this is the correct way to handle state. Don't use multicast. Don't use multicast. Don't use multicast. <laughs> this is the only correct way to do it, is to use rep notify. Um, okay, and this will not work, and it did not work when I was doing the test project because I did not come over here and check replicates. So you got to come here and make sure you check replicates. If it's not working like it didn't work for me, you got to make sure that's that. We're not actually going to move it. Rotating the lid doesn't count as movement. It would only count as movement if we moved the default scene root, and we're not. So we do not need to replicate the movement. We definitely don't want it always relevant. Um, we could adjust the relevancy here with the net cold distance squared. And, um, but we'll just go with the defaults here. It's fine. Um, okay, <clears throat> so we've got our is open. And that is good. And so now we gotta we gotta create our interface. So we're gonna go here to blueprints. We're creating an interface called interactable. Now interfaces are something that confuse a lot of people. And technically C does not have interfaces. Interfaces are in C sharp, they're in Java, they're in a lot of other languages, but they aren't technically in C. What we use in C++ that we call interfaces are actually virtual base classes. Uh, the way to think of them is a promise or a contract. So an interface is nothing more than a contract where we promise to do something. It has no functionality. It doesn't do anything. It's just a contract or a promise. And in this case, what we're going to promise is that each actor where we implement the interface, the interactable interface, we promise to create functions that the interactable interface says we'll create. Okay, So we're going to go into our interactable, and we're going to go here to our function, and we're going to create a simple function here just called interact. And if we wanted to send inputs and outputs, we could do it here, but we don't need to, we just need interact right now. It's, it's fairly simple. So we're basically saying every actor that implements interactable will implement this function, will create a function called interact. So it's just a way of guaranteeing we could create an interact function in all of the actors without an interface, but by using this interface, we're basically promising that every single one of them will have this, and that also makes it easiest for us to call it, because we can basically say, hey, I know that you implement interactable, so therefore I know for sure that you have this interact function because you promised. And that's all it is. It's not doing anything else. There's no magic. Some people think that this is a replacement for casting. It's not. Um, it is more expensive than casting. Epic has told us that, and someone did a test. Uh, but in this case, it's a pretty good solution, and I'm going to show you how how it makes things really clean a little bit later. So what we want to do is we want to go up to class settings. We don't use this very often, so we're on our loot chest. We go to class settings, and you'll see the interfaces is here. So we're going to go here, and we're going to choose interactable. Now, I don't really like how this works, I'll be honest. I'd like to see, like, a list of what I'm promising, right? I really I really don't like this interface. I, I also think that it should show them over here, right? Maybe even a separate section, right, is what I would do, where I would say, hey, here's what I promised. I made a promise here. Here's what I'm promising. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. Um, I, I don't know. I think that's a mistake. that they don't show up there. So we don't really see what we're promising, and I don't like that. Um, but what we can do is we do know what we promised. So we can come down here to our event graph, and we can type interact, and you will see here that we have, uh, let's see, no, add event interact. So we've got to make sure that it's, yeah, so don't choose that other one. It's got to be event interact, okay? And you'll see it has this little thing here to tell us 
which is kind of nice that it's got this thing here to tell us that that came from that. But I would like to see... I would like to see everything we promised. Because if you're making a promise, it's important to know that you kept the promise. So we're going to come down to our Interact, and this is actually only going to run on the client side, um, because we've got to make sure that this value only changes on the client side. But we're basically going to say, hey, when you interact with this, uh, we're going to set the value, and we're not, right now we're not going to deal with the fact that you could close the loot box again. All you can do is open it. So we're going to basically say, hey, if they interact with it, set it to open. So interacting a second time won't close it. And that's how simple it is. That's it. That's all we had to do for our loot chest here, uh, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> Most of the work's going to be in our player controller. So let's go and open up our player controller. Okay. And we want to first create, we're going to do this a little differently here. We're going to, I'm going to show you the different pieces. So we're going to do it. Okay, first what we got to do, we got to go and um, create a input. So going to hit plus on the action mapping, scroll down, and I'm just going to call it interact. Okay, so now that we have that, I'll come back to my player controller here, and I'll go to my input graft, and interact. Okay, and oh, I didn't set the key for it. <laughs> That's not going to do much good. I forgot to set the key. Input. And I'm going to set it to the Z key. It's going to be our interact key. Okay. And so we're going to do a do once. And we want to make sure this gets done on the server. So we're going to create a custom event. And we're going to call it server underscore interact. We'll come up here and we'll run on server, but not reliable. And then this will call server interact. And that will get us up to the server when they press the Z key. And then on the server, we want to trace line trace for objects. So we want to find a line trace. Um, but we've got these object types, do a make array, and just not, not happy with any of these. So why don't we go create our own object type? Go to project settings, and we'll go to collision, and you see we can create, you can have up to 18 custom channels, including object and trace channels. So we're going to add our own here, and we are going to call it Enter, actable. Default response is block because things that are interactive will also block collisions. So I think that's good. We add that. Uh, I had before, it didn't show up until I added it back again. So if you don't see it in your list, you may have to remove it and add it back. Potentially closing and opening the blueprint might do it too, but it doesn't seem to update on the fly. And we're going to give ourselves some more room. Okay, um, it already ignores self, but we need to get a start and an end. So we're going to do get controlled pawn, and we're going to cast to third person character with abilities. We'll convert it to a pure cast, and we're going to follow camera. We're going to be using the camera for this trace. And we'll do get world location. And that should be good for our starting value. So we're going to start there. But then we need to do get base or aim at, not from there from here. Get base aim rotation. 
we will get a forward vector from that. We'll multiply that forward direct vector by how far we want to trace. In this case, 500 works pretty good. And then we will add the world rotation to this vector and set it as the end. Okay. So we're basically saying, hey, start at the world location of the camera, then take the direction the camera is pointing, which is the aim rotation, get the forward direction. This is a one unit long normalized vector. We times it by 500, which gets us five meters. So we go five meters away. And then um, we add that to the world location to get the end. Okay. So this will do a trace on the server. And what we want to do is we want to say, hey, I'm only really interested if you hit something. So this will make sure that we hit something. And then we'll break this hit result. And what I like to do for testing is print string. And let's see what we hit. So we should be able to test that now and see if we get something. Load up these tiles and then we're going to have to drop a chest in the world. Down here is good. I don't like nighttime. We go grab our time of day. We'll remove the 3600. Now we should get daytime. So, we have to make sure our camera is pointing at it here. Okay, list of running servers. That's problematic. So, we already had something connected to the Z key, and that's not good. So, let's get rid of it list of running zone instances. I'm going to be trying to remove all of these um, direct key binds. They're problematic. So let's get rid of that. And try it again. <clears throat> let's just zoom in here real close. Yeah. I'm pressing the Z key and I'm not getting anything. Well, let's try to figure out what's going on here. Call this server interact. Run on server should make it here. We line trace for interactable. We ignore self. It looks pretty good. Let's see. So what I like to do here is change the draw debug type to persistent. And then I can see. Oh, you know what? I can't. No, nope, no. Nope. This is on the server. I can't do that. We will be doing it later uh, when we do our trace uh, for the client side. But... Not really seeing any issues here. Kind of surprised we're not getting something. So let's make sure that we're getting here. Let's see, trace. Just make sure it's getting there. It is. Okay. Let's press the Z key and it got there. That's good. And we print the string of the display name if the hit is true. So we must not be hitting anything, and that is because we never set the loot chest to interactable. You've probably been yelling at the screen. <laughs> so let's come over here, go down to our collision, change it to custom. That's fine. Change it to interactable. The defaults are good. We also want to change the lid too because you should be able to select the lid as well. We go to custom, interactable, and 
now we should get a different result. Collision is often the issue. <laughs> quite often the issue. Look at that. Loot chest. It's printing the name every time I press C. Awesome. Okay. So now we'll do what we really wanted to do, which is grab the hit actor and say interact. Now look at this. There's a special interface message. And this is what makes it really nice. Is that this hit actor is not of our loot chest type. It's just a hit actor. But because of how this interface works here, it is able to dynamically bind to it and say, hey, call interact if they have it. And there actually is a cool thing here. I think you could say has interface. Let me see if I find it. Does implement interface, which is kind of cool. So if you need to ask the question, is it interactable? You can do this. And say, hey, does that have interactable? Call this. I don't think that's necessary because I don't think this interact will throw any errors. If it's not, I think it'll just silently fail. But if you wanted to remind yourself where it came from, you should get the same result. Oh, look at that. It opened. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So um, that's cool from the server side. The problem is that it's actually kind of hard to point the camera to know, and people don't know to press the C key and stuff. So I think we also need to do a trace on the client side. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a function here called trace for interactable. We're going to go to our event graph, and we're going to come up here. We want to be on the remote side and add a new sequence here, and we're going to be do a set timer. We normally use by event, but now we're going to use function name. Pull this down here. We will get a reference to self, and the function name is trace for inter. Um, we could have potentially put this in the tick, um, but I don't feel like we need to tick every frame for it. I don't think people will notice if it's a fraction of a second behind. So I'm only going to do 10 times a second. You can adjust that number. Just trying to save some. There's no reason to do something every frame that you don't actually need to do every frame. But we could have put it here in the event tick, and it would work perfectly fine. It just might do some extra traces it didn't need to do. So we're going to come into this trace for interactable. We're actually going to come over here and copy in the event graph, uh, the input graph. And we can copy all this. See what I got copied? And I hit Control C. And now we're going to come into the trace here. I'm going to do a Control V. We pretty much want to do the same thing. On the server side or the client side, um, but we actually don't need this hit result, and we want to now have a widget that we show to let people know. So we're going to come back here to interactables. I'm going to move this. This wasn't created in the right place. Show that it was here was show redirectors. There we go. Okay, it didn't create any. I like to have that on. Um, okay, so I now want to create a widget. So user interface widget. And we're going to call it interactable widget. And we're going to drag a border. We'll drag text onto that border. And I think I went with anchor in the center, uh, negative 140, negative 20, 
280, 40, and we'll change the color to yellow, and we will set the tint to have no alpha. There we go. And we're going to go to our text, and we're going to put in press C to interact. And now we have that widget. We're going to come back here and create a variable in our player controller called interactable widget. And it is going to be of type interactable widget. We come back to our event graph. Here's where we create all our widgets. Give ourselves some room. Create widget. Choose interactable widget. And we'll set it. Don't do what I did when I was testing and forget to connect this wire. <laughs> me a little while to find that. Okay, cool. So now we have that. Uh, potentially this, we're going to go back to this trace, could run too early and throw some errors. So we're actually going to say here, don't do it until it's valid. Well, since we ran that in sequence, it probably wouldn't do that, um, but it's a good safety. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, get interactive widget, and we're going to do remove from parent when it's false. And then we're going to ask, is it already in the viewport? <clears throat> and I like to use true, so we're going to do a not. So we don't have to use false. And we're going to say if it's not in the viewport, you'll get a warning. It'll work, but you'll get a warning if you keep adding it to the viewport over and over again. So that's the way that we stop that. OK. So now we should be running this trace 10 times a second and showing this nice widget. Let's give it a try. Again, it's only if we're within 500, so it's not going to work from here. Look at that. <laughs> and now if it's in camera, you know, press Z to interact. You can make it be whatever you want. And there we go. Press Z to interact and open it up. Um, OK. So we have now made a loot chest interactable. And in the next uh, video, we will be adding loot to it. And uh, so we'll be using, we'll create uh, some data tables for our loot drops. And we'll create a structure to hold all that. And, uh, and then we'll have it so that when we, when we open that up, we can do it again here. So what we're going to make it do is that when we came here, and opened it up, we're going to make it so that that press Z to interact goes away. And it will open something that looks like this. And what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to drag stuff from the loot inventory, which will look similar to this, to this inventory. OK, so that's what we're going to do in the next video. Until next time, see ya.